Good morning, everybody. Rub the sleepies from your eyes. It's time to do it all over again. Welcome to Math Lesson 23. Pretty basic today. We're talking about recognizing halves. So let's dive right in. So the main concept of the day, a fraction is equal to a half if the denominator, meaning the bottom number, is exactly twice the numerator, the top. And by twice, we mean times it by two, don't we? So a half. So one times two would give you two. Here's the same size piece, but it's labeled as two-fourths, because I'm talking about two of these pieces when all four sections. Two times two is four. Here I have three six. I have six total pieces, and I'm talking about these three blue sections. And three times two is six. Same thing over here with four ace. I have eight total pieces, and I'm talking about these four blue ones. Four times two is eight. They are all fractions equal to one half, correct? If you don't understand that bit right now, hit rewind, because that's pretty much the whole ball game. But I am going to do it in reverse, because we've also learned that division is an inverse operation to multiplication, which is just fancy math speak to mean it's the opposite, right? So a fraction is equal to a half if the numerator, the top, is exactly half the denominator. And to get a half, always divide by two, right? So here's our same three, four friends, only multiplying by two. Now I'm starting on the denominator and dividing by two. Two divided by two is one. Four divided by two is two. Six divided by two, hey, that's three. And eight divided by two, you guessed it, that equals four. So again, if you don't understand what just happened here and the fact that these are four equal, equivalent fractions that all equal a half, if you don't understand or you don't see what's going on, rub the sleepies from your eyes and hit rewind because that's pretty much the whole concept of the lesson. Now we gotta see how it's gonna be applied. So let's kick off right here. Think of a counting number. Remember, your counting numbers are just one through infinity, but when they tell you to do this, think small. Why work too hard? And then double it. Just times your number by two. Okay, I'm, I'll bite, Mr. Hines. Think of a counting number two. Now we double it, right? We're gonna multiply it by two which would be four. Two times two is four. Then write a fraction equal to one half using your number, I pick two, and it's double. That was four, right? So they want you to write a fraction equal to half using a two and a four. So two would be my numerator and four would be my denominator, right? Not too tough so far. Check this one out. Which one of these fractions does not equal a half? Well, we said if we just multiply the top times two, seven times two, hey, that's 14, right? So I don't think it's that one. Nine times two, hey, that's 18. So this guy equals a half. And I'm looking for ones that do not equal a half. 21 times 2, if you can work it out in your mind or on a scratch piece of paper, that also equals a half. 21 times 2 is 42. The last guy up here, 8, if I multiply them by 2, hey, 8 times 2, that should give me 16, right? Not 15. So which one of these does not equal a half? That has to be 8 fifteenths, doesn't it? 
Check out this one. Which of these fractions does equal a half? Now, they're going to be mixing up and differentiating that question on you your whole rest of the year. Make sure to read your directions carefully. So let's take a look here. If I went 13 and I times it by 2, well, that should give me 26, not 25. If I went 7 and I multiplied it by 2, that should give me 14, not 16. So 7 sixteenths doesn't equal a half. If I went here with 10 and I multiplied them by 2, 10 times 2, that should give me 20 if I wanted it to equal a half. So again, the one that's correct is the guy on the end. 9 times 2 does equal 18. 9 eighteenths does equal 1 half. Check out these guys when you're comparing fractions. Later on, I'm going to show you a real easy shortcut, but here's what we're doing in the meantime. And so the best way to go about these is actually do the inverse operation of division. Don't try to multiply numerator to denom denominator. Divide denominator to numerator. So let's start off here. 18, if I was going to divide it by 2, well, that should be 9 for a numerator, right? Do you see what I'm doing? 18 divided by 2 should be 9. Is 5 more than 9 or less than 9, Mr. Hines? Hey, this guy's less. He is less than a half. Let's check out over here on this side. Starting with the denominator, if I went 12 divided by 2, 12 divided by 2, well, that should give me 6 if I wanted it to equal a half, right? 6 twelfths equals a half. Is 7 more or less? 7 is actually more, isn't it? So now that we have that figured out, which way is the crocodile's mouth going to go? Do you want less than a half or more than a half? Well, I know what line I'm going to be in. I want more every time, right? Okay, it's a twofer. We're still doing it the same way, right? 24, if you were divided by 2, hey, that is 12. So 12 is equal to 12. This guy is equal to a half. Let's try over here. 12 divided by 2, hey, that would be 6, right? So this guy is equal to a half. Well, you have half on the left side and half on the right side. That sounds to me like they are equal, right? Let's go to the other half of the two for a trickier one. First time I have an odd denominator. Ready for it? Three divided by two. Well, that would actually be one and a half. Three divided by two. Make sure you understand we're dividing when we go denominator to numerator, right? So is 2 more or less than a half? It is actually more, right? 2 thirds is more than a half. Let's try our other side. 4 tenths. Start on the denominator. Divide by 2. 10 divided by 2 should be 5. What's bigger, 4 tenths or 5 tenths? This guy is less than a half, right? It would take 5 tenths to equal a half. So what's going to be the bigger piece, the piece that's more than a half or the piece that's less than a half? More than a half is bigger every time. I'm going to do one more here, starting at the denominator, dividing it by 2. 10 divided by 2, 
Well, that should give me five, right? Is six more than a half or less than a half? Six is more than five, right? Five tenths is what a half would have been. Six tenths is more than a half. Let's try this one. 12 divided by 2. Hey, 12 divided by 2 is exactly 6. This is exactly equal to a half. So what's bigger, the piece that's more than a half or the piece that equals a half? More is always more. Last one, I promise. 10 divided by 2. Hey, that's going to give me 5. So again, this guy is exactly equal to 1 half, isn't it? And let's try this one. 10 divided by 2. Well, if you want 10 divided by 2 to be a half, your numerator should be 5. 3 is less than a half, isn't it? So we have a choice to make. What's going to be the bigger piece? A piece that's equal to a half or a piece that's less than a half? I want the piece that's equal to a half, right? All right, before I turn you loose on Socrative, there's one more that I want to talk about. Remember this guy from Thursday or something that looked awful, some, awfully familiar. And just a quick Monday morning review. Anytime you have a number next to a variable, that means to multiply, right? That threw a few people. My advice to solve that problem, anytime you see an equation with a number next to a variable, just write in the time side. So I would highly recommend on your horizontal paper that you write 8 times 3 equals 6 times h. Write it all out horizontally, right? Okay, let's go ahead and combine some terms. I have 8 times 3. Let's get them underlined and drop that combined term answer down when it's time. I read equations left to right, so it's time right away. 8 times 3, okay, that's 24. I did not underline anything else. I did not underline equals, did not underline 6, did not underline times, and did not underline H. Basketball players, football players, yeah, I'm talking to you folks. Anybody who knows how to change directions on the field in an equation, that equal sign is always our goalpost, right? So when it comes time to isolate a variable, all you are really doing is kicking it over the other direction. That's it. We've talked about this. They started us, us kicking from left to right because that's the direction our eyes are used to moving when we read. The only thing different is they are kicking it left, right? Kicking it left, correct? So let's take a look. Let's write down 24. I kicked over times and 6. I always do the inverse operation. I want to change times to divide. Instead of times 6, divide by 6. That's it. Then don't forget your equal sign. And don't forget your variable, which is h. And our last step. Go ahead and combine terms once again, 24 divided by 6, and when it's time, you'll just drop that combined term answer down. We read left to right, so the first thing I run into is underlined, so it's time. 24 divided by 6, hey, that's 4. I did not underline my equal sign. I did not underline h. And I have 4 equals h. 
not too tough. The only thing that's different is the direction you're kicking it. All right, that is the end. You are certainly going to want a scratch piece of paper, maybe a multiplication chart, and good luck on the Socrative quiz.